What's going on YouTube? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the second part of how antivirus works. In the first part, we talked about a couple definitions about antivirus, the components, and the detection techniques. In today's video, we're going to talk about the other detection techniques of antivirus. So basically, in the last video, we focused on signature-based or static detection. And it is actually the traditional method of how antiviruses detects vi detect viruses and malwares so it relies on you know database of signatures and if the predefined signatures or the virus signature do not exist in the database of the antivirus then you know the antivirus won't be able to detect the virus and it will flag it as a p9 files p9 file now today we're going to talk about the next method which is the dynamic detection so dynamic detection is focused on finding out whether a file is virus or not based on checking the file at runtime using different methods. So basically here we run the file. We run the file. In a static analysis or it's a static method, we don't run the file. We just check its signature, right? If the signature exists in the database, then we trigger an alarm. If it doesn't exist, then we don't trigger an alarm. Here, the dynamic detection is focused on running the file, right? So basically, we have two methods here. When we run the file, we either monitor the API calls and system calls, or we use the method of sandboxing. Okay. So the first method here is by monitoring the API calls. The detection engine or the antivirus engine inspects Windows application calls and monitors Windows API calls using some, something called the Windows hooks, if you know what I mean. Now the other method is sandboxing here. So sandbox if you know what does it mean, Sandbox is a virtualized environment used to run malicious files separated from the host computer. So it's like you have the host computer here, all right? And this is the Sandbox. Here it is. So the virus is run here. It cannot escape to the host computer. So a Sandbox is a virtualized environment used to run malicious files separated from the host computer. Now, normally, guys, this is usually done in an isolated environment. And the primary goal here is to analyze how the malicious software acts in the system. Now, once the malicious software is confirmed by monitoring its behavior inside the sandbox here, okay, a unique signature and rule will be generated and added to the database of the antivirus. Okay. Now, here in the dynamic detection until far we have two methods the api calls and the sandboxing of course every method has has its drawbacks now one of the biggest drawbacks of dynamic detection guys is that you have to run the file in order to analyze it so it requires executing and running the malicious software for a limited time in the virtualized environment to protect the system resources and as you know guys, some advanced malwares have the ability to bypass the dynamic detection. What do I mean by that? If you run the malware inside Sandbox, all right, some malwares have the ability to um, bypass the Sandbox. What do I mean by that? Dynamic detection can be bypassed. How? Malware developers implement their software to not work within the virtual or simulated environment to avoid dynamic analysis. For example, say here we have a PDF file that you know, contains embedded malicious code. What's gonna happen? If you open the PDF file, it's gonna open normally, but some part of it will not work. For example, if the, uh, the malware will check if the system spawns a real process of executing the software before running malicious activities. Or sometimes it let the software wait some time before execution. That's how they pass, bypass the dynamic detection. And that's how we have other sorts or other types of detection techniques other than dynamic and static. And here we come to the third detection technique guy, which is heuristic and behavioral detection. So this is two, and here we have three, and that was one here. 
So heuristic and behavioral detection guys is an essential component in all modern antivirus products. All modern products now have heuristic and behavioral detection as a feature. Because it's, it is essential by the way, if a malware can bypass static and dynamic detection, right, then we have to find a way to uh, be up or in line with the most recent developments of malware techniques or, you know. So basically, in heuristic and behavioral detection, we have two, also we have two methods. We have the static and we have the dynamic. Now the static heuristic analysis, what happens here guys, we decompile or we extract the source code of the file, of the binary. Say we have virus.exe, okay. Now in static behavioral detection, we will extract the source code, could be in C, right? So we extract the source code and we analyze it. So what happens, the extracted source code is compared to other well-known virus source codes. These source codes are previously known and predefined in a heuristic database. So again, in the heuristic and behavioral detection, we hold a database. Database contains source codes. But of what? Source codes of malicious software. Right. Now, when we extract or we decompile, the virus, the virus source code using static behavior detection, we compare the source code to the database of existing malicious source codes. If a match meets or exceeds a threshold percentage, then the code is flagged as malicious. Even if the virus was able to bypass dynamic and static detection, if the source code of the virus exists in the database source code of the heuristic and behavior detection, then it will be triggered or it will trigger a fall, uh, an alarm, a positive alarm. Now we talk about the next method, which is dynamic or dynamic heuristic and behavioral detection. This one is based on what we call guys the rules. So here we have rules, much like Yara rules, if the example works. What happens here is that uh, people or most mainly researchers and malware uh, analyzers would analyze the malware, say the virus, in an isolated and controlled environment, much like a machine on its own dedicated for analyzing malware. They would monitor the behavior of the malware, okay? And based on the behavior of the malware, they would flag it as malicious. These behaviors or the behavior of the malware is analyzed and written into what we call the rules. So the then it calls, it becomes behavioral rules. They are created to match the software's malicious activities within a target machine. For example, let's say uh, virus.exe here tries to spawn a process called LSAS. You know what I mean, LSAS here. So if this program tries to interact with this process, okay, that contains the user's NTLM hashes, it means this software is malicious, right? Because it tries to pull the credentials of the current user. Now, sometimes if the process like this one or the virus tries to open a process or a listening port that communicates with a command and control server, then this could be a malicious software. That's, wh that's what we call the behavior analysis. We monitor the behavior of the virus in a controlled environment. And then we create rules to match this behavior, okay? All right. Now let's come to AV testing. So we have talked about the detection techniques. Let's now talk about antivirus testing. So what do I mean by antivirus testing here? So we don't we don't only test malwares and files. We also test antiviruses, guys. So AV testing environments are a great place to check suspicious or malicious files. We can upload the files to get them scanned against virus, various AV software products or vendors. For example, AV testing example is virus total. So here you upload one file and you test whether the file will be caught by various antivirus products. Here is this the file and at the same time, if you beforehand you know that the file is malicious, you will test the capability of the antiviruses there, right? If they will be able to flag it as malicious or not. Now Parasota is an example. Also, we have another example, for example, here, 
let's draw an arrow here and there is the Jotty malware scan you can google it and find it it's another antivirus testing platform where you can upload files and test them now what is the difference now between Jotty and VirusTotal so basically VirusTotal has a sharing policy what it means all scanned results all the files you upload all the scanned results will be passed and shared with antivirus vendors to improve their products and update their databases for known malware so if you are building your payload and you want to test it be careful of sending the payload to virus total because this will burn the dropper or the payload you use in engagements the payload will be sent to antivirus even if the antivirus products failed to detect the payload it will be sent to the antivirus vendors and analyzed later and then when it is flagged as malicious an update will be pushed to all of the antivirus vendors to detect your virus so it's better to if you want only to test your payload it's better to upload it to a platform that doesn't have a sharing policy like Jotty malware okay all right now let me uh, open a new one well, let me remove this one here like that okay so now we come to the last point of this video guy which is fingerprinting antivirus software now here we come to a pen testing part of this so basically when you conduct penetration testing one part of your reconnaissance is to find out if the host you are scanning or the machine you are targeting has an antivirus solution this is very important because if it has you will have to be careful uh, when you send files or upload files to the target machine now there are many methods to do antivirus or, or AV software reconnaissance we will find out in this video how to do that we are going to skip to the practical part and demonstrate this all right guys so one of the methods to conduct reconnaissance or antivirus reconnaissance is to use sharp edr checker now sharp edr checker has a single or dedicated github repo i'm going to put the link in the video description when you download this you can open it with microsoft visual studio and this is the source code so what we're going to do we're going to go to build and build a solution you will have the source code compiled after the source code is compiled you can start using the binary so let's click x on that and go straight to the binary and execute it so when we execute that we will be able to see the list of the security solutions that as that are found on the machine so going to files and we double click on edr checker okay as you can see now it is checking the processes checking the system it's gonna tell us or give us an output that would tell what kind of antivirus solutions are installed on the machine okay so service summary system in sense as you can see it discovered that we have windows defender and installed on the machine as you can see windows defender is found based on folders and services here all right so you can use this uh, program guys you can when you are doing pen testing you can just compile it upload it to the machine that you are testing and run it on the machine you'll be able to find well, how, what are the security solutions found on the machine based on that okay that's one solution the other one is av checker so we go to the other one now all right let's go over the code here so we have a pretty fine list as you can see of well-known antivirus applications in the AV check these are the processes that are spawned when antivirus is working on the machine as you can see these are the names of the process not the names of the antiviruses you can find out the name of the process of a specific antivirus from its documentation you can add on the list to, if you want to make it more uh, broad and covering more antivirus vendors so basically all of these processes of most well-known antiviruses are stored in an array called AV check okay then we get here we use the Windows management instrumentation command line in here select from Windows 32 process 
to list all currently running processes in the target machine and store them in process list okay now what we're going to do we're going to go through the currently running processes and compare if they exist in the predefined array here AV check if a match is found then we have an AV software installed on the machine so this C sharp program guy utilizes WMIC which is Windows Management Instrumentation uh, command line object to list current running processes as shown here okay which may be monitored by AV software by the way if an AV software is poorly implemented to monitor the, the WMIC queries or Windows APIs it may cause false positive results in scanning our C sharp program now how to use this program we're going to build okay build solution and once you do that you'll be able to find the output as you can see if you build now as you can see now it is stored under this path here so you can take this program and run it against any machine to check what kind of antiviruses exist on that machine so that was for today guys i hope you liked the video and before i stop i'm going to show you guys the room this is the part two of this room by the introduction to antivirus um, and we today we covered task six and task seven there are no questions to answer so it is just the concepts to understand and comprehend thank you for watching